Scientists destroy things to understand them. That's the trope. Hi, my name's Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. If you'd like to know more about nature, how we find out about it, and how all of this relates to being kind in our daily lives, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell, and sharing. I can't promise that you'll find answers in single videos, but it's all there in the channel as a whole. On to the worst trope in scientific storytelling. Now, in this case, it certainly was a reality, not just a trope, at one point in time. But it isn't anymore. No more cutting up frogs and stuff. We only do that in school now in order to discourage people from liking science. Today, being an academic is about three things. Administration, strategy and leadership. To be fair, what follows is an excruciatingly simplified description of what this means. If you're sitting in your office right now, writing a grant proposal, for example, filled with doubts as to how to describe your expected breakthrough, quote-unquote, please be kind. This piece isn't for you. It is for the folks who insist on putting you in an imaginary ivory tower so that what they say about you doesn't feel like bullying. I'll try to explain, not the daily details and minutiae of academic life, but what life for an academic looks and perhaps even feels like. It's nothing objective and based on my experience. But if you think that I'll just let you put my former colleagues into those ivory towers so you can safely call them crazy or arrogant or whatever, well, then I won't let you. See, as I mentioned at another place, I've got a PhD in physics. It took me seven years and oodles of side projects after my masters to get there. I'm certainly not a genius. What's more, I live in a flat that is smaller than most flats and earn less than a lot of people who didn't get as much education as I did. Don't get me wrong, there are people living in ivory towers. They come from all walks of life though, and they're usually not the ones who saw their education to the end and decided to make it their work too. Ponder this for a second. Who are the richest people in the world, huh? Do you know why it took so long for me to get that PhD? And most of all, do you know why I was able to get there in the end? Well, firstly, it took a while because up to 70% of my workday back then was spent filling out forms and reading grant expositions, networking, and writing grant proposals. And secondly, that had nothing to do with physics. The actual science came in when supervising, that is, guiding students towards their degrees. I never really did science, it felt like. It felt like, well, administration, strategy and leadership. If I had had to be a genius, I would have probably never been able to get that PhD. The funny thing was that outside of academics, I kept running into people thinking that I was a super genius at thinking with a capital T. In fact, for quite a while I bought into that hype and thought highly of myself in that regard. I sat myself down at a desk in an ivory tower, only to find myself filling out forms. Given how modern administration works, this is indeed important work, deserving of its own dedicated people. But it wasn't what folks outside of academia thought I was doing, like at all, and it jarred with my perception of myself at that time too. So I talked to colleagues I trusted about this. It turned out that they all felt like I did, to varying degrees of course, and in different ways when looking at the details. A biologist I know, for example, told me this little story. He was asked to discuss his work in his kid's class. The kids and the teacher were slightly surprised to hear him talk about fungi. 
That's what a mycologist would do, and he obviously told them that that was what he did beforehand. But still, they expected him to cut up the proverbial frog, and when he didn't even cut up a mushroom, they got disappointed. That's the worst trope about us, he told me. I hate it with a passion. I'm expected to dissect animals for my work. I'm being told that that's bad too, and why do we always do it? You know, scientists destroying something to find out about it. And then, when I don't do it, that's somehow even worse. I'd like to tell you something different, but today's scientist needs to be a good administrator and strategic leader. Getting money assigned to her and her work group, recruiting the right human resources to do the actual job, and then finding the right collaborators. That's it. And for what? Not riches. At least not in the natural sciences. Forget that ivory tower. Scientists aren't above you. Just keep in mind that they're not below you either. We are human, in a very real sense, all of us, scientist or not. <laughs>